do we have these mics on? Okay, that's great. So uh, our next panel should be assembling over uh, on the side. Again, uh, if we can have Jeff Blankford's questions brought up to him directly. <clears throat> um, we're going to start the next panel right on time, so we've got about five minutes for questions. You can always ask us later as well. Uh, I've got a few questions here. Uh, question number one, can't Arab allies of the U.S. use the legal approach of lobbying to influence U.S. Congress? The answer is no. Uh, the 1938 Foreign Agents Registration Act is selectively enforced. If you're Pakistani, uh, you will uh, be prosecuted if you attempt to do this. It is, only, um, uh, it is only one country that really has a total exemption to this. Uh, question number two, how many A-bombs does Israel have? I don't know. Uh, Jimmy Carter, after he left office, speculated it was uh, 100 or 150, something like that. 300. 300, okay, thank you. Um, Saw him this morning, maybe. All righty. Uh, we, um, okay, I quoted documents proving that Israel has nuclear weapons laboratories equivalent to Los Alamos. Does that mean uh, that it not only has a fission bomb, but also a fusion bomb? The report, again, you can find it online, Critical Technology Assessment in Israel and NATO Nations. Uh, it states unequivocally that in 1987 they were developing the codes they needed to build uh, hydrogen bombs. So look at the report. Um, but it's pretty unequivocal. So um, I'll leave it to Seth. Uh, he's going to go through his questions. Okay, I'll try to go through these quickly because there's a lot here. Um, how could or should you delegitimatize the Israel lobby without delegitimatizing Israel itself? Do you think Israel is sustainable? You know, in all honesty, I don't know. Um, what I do know is that you know we tend to focus on the Israel South Africa analogy, and there is a problem with that analogy, in that in South Africa the whites were like 10 percent, and the blacks were like 90 percent. In Israel, roughly 50 percent of the people are Jewish. We have a a horrible situation with competition for the land. And we have to find a way to be fair to all of them. And hopefully better minds than mine can do that. Um, does APAC mentor or develop people in Washington at the senior level? Um, I'd say it's the wrong question. Uh, because what, is, what APAC does is it starts at the beginning. Um, in local communities, APAC is politically neutral. They recruit both Democrats and Republicans and go to see everybody. So if you run for city council or a state legislator, somebody's going to come over to you and say, hi, I'm a Democrat. If you're a Democrat, then I'm a Democrat. I'm from APAC. We just wanted to say hi. And by the way, here's my check. Now, it's somebody who was probably going to give him a check anyway, but he's doing it through APAC so that he gets the influence. So by the time they get to DC, they're already purchased. Do you want me to go through? I want you to do one more, and then Jeff okay. has the final. OK. Um, let's see. Oh, uh, this is an interesting one. Talk about the funding of the Conference of Presidents. Uh, again, it's a non-issue. These are the heads of the groups that, that we just heard raised millions. The Conference of Presidents is, is unbelievably small. It has one executive, and I think, maybe if I re read correctly, it's like five or six staff. They do it th they, they're a decision-making body not a, an operational body. So funding for them is not an issue. It's interesting, uh, Malcolm Hohenlein, who's a longtime executive director of the Conference of Presidents, right. bragged back in 1995 when Clinton was uh, president as having been like the architect helping to form the first counterterrorism and death penalty act, which, which added the number of possible death penalties under the federal law, but also really responsible for making it almost impossible for Arab Americans to donate money to Palestinian organizations without possibly being arrested for, for collaborating with a terrorist organization. So they're very instrumental, and they have access to uh, the offices of every member of Congress. We've got 55 seconds, 49. One other thing I should say about APAC, which you'll be hearing about later, is they have their meetings and dinners and luncheons all over the country, and they, they invite 
uh, members of, of, of all the local officials, mayors, city councilmen, supervisors, police chiefs, anyone who's a potential candidate for Congress. And when they leave, then the local federations, Jewish organizations, then send those officials on all expense paid trips to Israel. So by the time when they come back, they realize that this, these organizations are powerful politically and they're ambitious politicians, they know where the bread is buttered. And so they're in Israel's pocket even before they run for Congress. Thank you very much. Next panel, please. Thank you.